And so number 10 then from paper 1 of the 2016 higher maths, a little two mark question, just and again inverse function but this time referring to a graph. Here's a graph of a particular function, it doesn't actually matter for this particular question because it just wants to get the inverse graph. But here obviously that's the log one, didn't even need to tell you that, passes through one. And at four the answer is one, so it must be base four. Sketch the graph of the inverse function. Well, the inverse function simply means this is the graph that gives you the answers for any number you care to put in. So you put in an x and you get an answer. The inverse function will take the answer and tell you what you started with. So it turns the answers into the inputs. So it turns the answers into the inputs. And that'll be the result. And of course, that's got an axis of symmetry about the line y equals x. So that'll be the first part. Think of the line y equals x, maybe I'll put a wee note of it, because that means I'm going to interchange them, and then draw the graph the other way round. So it's going to go like this. And of course, that point would reflect straight up to here, so that now becomes 0, 1. Notice they're just interchanging, of course, because that's what the inverse does. It takes the answer and puts it in as the input. And the point 4, 1 will become 1, 4. Again, it should be way up there. I'll just put it down here. And really, apart from saying that's now y equals the inverse function, that's about it. One mark for reflecting in y equals x. Doesn't imply you need to have that drawn, just for the graph being the reflection. And the second mark for putting in the two points again. And make sure the tail end of your graph of the inverse function doesn't touch the x-axis, which it looks as if it might just do there.